the five people. No, I, I don't see myself. Li Xun, because you are joining in as an attending, sir. If you go back to the link, uh, you can actually join the panel as a speaker. Then we can hear you. We, we can see you. I can see you joining as an attendee. Yes, I got you right here. Right, you can hear me. Yes. Li Xun uh, is, uh, is trying to join, uh, because Li Xun at the moment is joined as attendees, so we can't see her. Oh, okay. Yeah, she right. uh, go back and join as a speaker. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Can you hear us? I can hear him. Uh, your mic. It's muted. Yeah, Suman, Suman, your, white, your, your, your mic, you have mute. Okay, disappear. <laughs> disappeared. I don't new know. Technology, new technologies. <laughs> right, right, right. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, where are you, Wilton, at this moment? Hong Kong. Where else? <laughs> you? Where are you? Uh, I'm in Beijing. Oh, Beijing. Oh, okay. Beijing is very safe. I thought you yeah. are in America. Uh, I was right. Yeah. Can you can hear us, huh? Suman, you can hear us. Can you hear us, Suman? Hello. Hear me. Yeah, you can hear us, huh? Can you hear okay. me? Yes. Yes. Now, okay, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear us? You can, huh? Hello. Su Suman, you can hear us? Okay, Li Xuan, you are, I, you are still joining in as an attendee. I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me. Uh, see, but the other, the other speaker can hear me. See, Brian, you can hear me, right? Yep, I can hear you well. Yeah. Can you hear us? Both of us. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Li Xun, you need to join as a speaker. Yeah, I think yeah. it's better. Yeah. Okay. Li Xun, I think you need to join as a speaker. Okay, Li Xun is still uh, joining as attendees. Huh? Hello, Li Xun, can you speak? Cannot speak. Let me text her. Huh? Let me text her. Click the email. Click the email. Right. Li Xun, if you can click the email, there's a link you can join in the panel as a speaker. Then you can, you can, your, your face, your photo will be sold in the panel. Can you do that? I can't find the link. Oh, you can't find the link. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you speak? Listen, can you speak? You can't. Well then, she just texted me that uh, she, uh, the website is not letting her to join as a speaker and she's mm. trying to find the right link. And she said, we can start first. Yeah, I think we mm. have to start first. <laughs> okay, okay, good. 
Okay. Instead of six people, now we are free. Okay, we done the free, so we are more time. I hope Li Xuan can join us soon as possible. Uh, first yeah. of all, uh, good evenings, uh, all the uh, panel members, as well as all the attendees. Uh, and thank you for Horace Asia to have us to hold this panel. Uh, this panel is about the VC industry in Asia. And uh, our panel have originally six people uh, from a very diversified background. We have the IMA expertise, Nai Li Xuan. We also have entrepreneurship uh, experts, Nai uh, Sun, uh, <coughs> uh, Sun Yi and uh, uh, Sun, Sun Man, as well as Seabright uh, C in uh, uh, VC. Okay, uh, I, I, I hope I will leave uh, every, all the panel member a chance to introduce themselves. But for me, I'm actually, ah, I got this, I got you now. <laughs> yes, we really yeah, you. I have to, I have to log out and log in again. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you have to, because uh, I think the system is due to anybody. Anyway, okay, I just give an introduction of our panel. But anyway, um, I give a short introduction myself. I'm, uh, I've been in VC angel investment for nearly 30 years. Uh, used to in charge of the VC operation under Singapore government time asset. And now I more or less uh, semi-retired teaching uh, VC entrepreneurship in uh, a few university, including the University of Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong, the National University of Singapore, as well as the Shenzhen Finance Institution. Um, and I have, uh, I suppose there have another five members, but up to now I have three, so I will leave the existing three to, uh, intro to give a brief introduction of themselves. Uh, let's start uh, with the lady first. Nishen, they will start with yours. Can you, do you mind to give us a brief introduction about yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, my pleasure. Um, so my name is Li Xu, uh, originally from China and being in the U.S. for 20 years. And a few years ago, I started my business. Uh, we are uh, specialized in, uh, in uh, consulting and also um, project finance in renewable and uh, infrastructure projects, uh, especially in emerging market. And then uh, we also focus on uh, medical device, um, uh, bringing the uh, Western uh, companies to uh, China market. Uh, that's what we do, yeah. Mm. Okay, then uh, our next uh, member, Suman, I, uh, you are a senior executive. You have been uh, working in a big Fortune 500 company. Now you're helping the entrepreneur. Can you give us a little bit background about yourself, please? Yeah. Hi, good evening, all of you. Uh, I've been uh, on the other side of uh, the investment deck, uh, leading investment decisions and strategies executions for uh, the, the Fortune 50 companies that we spoke about, Professor. Uh, we have been uh, actively investing in, uh, as a company, uh, in, in parts of or the, the spectrum of technologies that uh, may have, may not have had an environmental impact. But in last two years since I stepped out of my corporate life, uh, and which was pretty much across the across the globe, uh, my focus at this point of time is, uh, uh, is uh, impact as well as investment in uh, the sustainable development goals. Uh, of which environment is clearly one one large part of it, but effectively trying to solve the equation from a perspective of livelihood, health, education, and all the other supporting pillars, so that uh, the final goal is sustainable, uh, and and that's I think the a critical measure because uh, today uh, a lot of questions being asked around the environmental challenges uh, have to stand withstand the test of sustainability. So that's what we are trying to do over here across uh, South Asia, Africa, and uh, uh, South Southeast Asia, Africa, and uh, uh, and Europe. Good, thank you. Uh, wow, well, of course, uh, the next one is not last one. Is uh, C Bright, up and coming young ex investment executive. Uh, he highly specialized in media uh, technologies and uh, consumer sectors. C Bright, yours. Can you give us a short introduction about yourself, please? Sure. So I'm the founder and chairman of Summer Dante Capital, and uh, we are majorly focusing on bringing, uh, you know, companies in the technology, including automotive, uh, artificial intelligence, healthcare, uh, as well as agriculture. Those companies in those sectors in the from the U.S. and Europe, 
uh, to set up joint ventures in markets such as uh, you know China and the rest of Asia. And uh, so uh, you know, like we not only bring them you know like with our couple, but also uh, we bring them uh, the management team and operation team uh, in order to fulfill the necessary operations of the joint venture. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, regarding this, uh, our topic, uh, reshaping Asia environmental uh, VC industries. Uh, well, we, we, are, we are given two questions. One is on uh, how uh, to support green ventures with time, space, and cash, especially in the area of green technologies. Uh, Honestly, um, you know, we, 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 all, we all now are affected by this COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, in some extent, some people told me that uh, it is like the uh, strike back from the um, mother of nature because our human being have been uh, damaging uh, the environment substantially. So, um, oh, honestly, I don't know how true it is, but I think it's always good that... Um, we can take care of our, our uh, environment. Now, as a VC for 30 years, honestly, we, we, we invest according to the whether the project is making money or not. Unless under our charter of investment, uh, saying that we can invest in green tech, otherwise we are not specifically, we look for green tech for investment because as a VC, we have the duty to manage the fund and provide uh, financial return to our investors. But I think the world has obviously changed. I, I don't know whether how, you know, th that COVID-19 will affect us in our decision. Uh, but I think, uh, Li Xun, you may be able to give us some insight on how, how this one uh, uh, going to uh, change our VC uh, direction you know, to more green technology focus or green venture focus. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, so uh, I am very active in the renewable energy uh, in Asia market, uh, especially uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, uh, and Indonesia. Um, in general, for green energy, there are two compo uh, you know two categories. One is technology, technology. The other is more on the operation, like develop and um, construct and also operate the projects. So uh, the technology itself is mainly you know still uh, pretty much in the um, more developed market, uh, Japan, um, Taiwan, uh, Korea, and mainland China. Uh, the rest of Asia is more focused on the development and construction and also the uh, operation uh, activities. Um, so there are a lot of foreign uh, capital or, cap or capital in general in, uh, in the Asian market in general, a uh, couple of reasons. Um, Globally, uh, com by comparison, Asia is uh, still very booming, uh, regardless of COVID or not. Um, and then, uh, you know, renewable energy is sector itself is a uh, upcoming sector. Um, from from now until uh, 2050, there will be a lot of capital is going to be deployed into this sector. So by combination, uh, Asia, especially uh, fast growing market like the Vietnam and China, get a lot of the capital attention uh, from all over the world. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so that's a good thing for Asia, uh, regardless of COVID. And then um, the second thing is um, within, from capital standpoint, uh, there are, the behavior is very different uh, 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 by comparison into this market. Uh, for example, the Middle East capital, the European capital, and the Chinese capital, and then the Japanese capital, when they go to this market, is it, the behavior is very different. They're all looking for return. Uh, however, you know, Asians in general, I mean, uh, most Asians are on this panel, uh, we work 24-7. And and then the, so the, the market itself is very, you know, very hot. So the, the speed is very quick. But by comparison, Europeans just have a certain step, you know, cadence when they do business invest. So they want to think about holiday, which is their holiday, not the local holiday, local market holiday. They, they, they work, you know, they, they need a weekend off, which again, using the European time zone, not the Asian market time zone. So there's a, a little bit lacking on the, 
on the pace, sense of urgency when they're looking at specific projects, if it's a capital is from a European capital. Uh, but they are very interested about large capital behind them. It's just the pace is slightly uh, lacking. And uh, second is the, um, the, um, the attitude towards the local market. Uh, I, I, by working with a lot of European funds, I uh, personally think they should do more market study, number one, uh, and then be, you know, and look at local market, hire some local employee staff uh, for them to um, understand the market better. And, and then uh, uh, by just by seeing, look at the questions they ask me about the projects in, uh, in markets like Vienna or China, I can tell if they are experienced investor or a very you know, new invest into the market because certain questions only very new invest like just like first time, home time buyer type of questions um and then uh, you know the, the fear of policy change the fear of local um uh the the project not for international standards uh just, you know these are very new investor type questions uh and then um, uh, you know of course uh in the pop in, in the media side, they will say the market is not mature, it's not developed. So, you know, it's just perception, I will say. Uh, the only advice I can give to those new in, uh, uh, investors is uh, do more homework and uh, uh, study the market more. And of course, from the from market standpoint, um, there are a lot of uh, things, uh, like say the expectation on the price in the hot market, especially in the market, is super hot right now. Uh, the local developer have sometimes have an unreasonable expectation to the valuation. Uh, so these are the things, you know, it's, it's just the, the uh, uh, de de determined by the nature of the market right now. And of course, uh, the, uh, by, uh, the other, no, by compared to the capital side, the local developer appear to be no patience uh, because just things going, moving so fast. Uh, they look like they're very anxious. They even, um, in a lot of projects we work on, they require due diligence be no more than 30 days or 45 days, which European investor minimum needed two months at least. So there is a huge gap on the uh, uh, investor side and the, the projects, uh, the project side. So that's just a few you know, interesting observations I noticed when I working with these markets yeah, and the international capital. So yeah, just, just share a little bit. I'll leave the time for the other speakers. Yeah, very good. Thank you. I, I saw a few friends in the attendees, uh, Kari and Antonio. Thank you. I also saw some couple of questions from the from the attendees too. But I would like to let the panel give the opinion first. Uh, 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 Suman, you are work for Siemens. I think Siemens also involved in some sort of uh, green technology, green involvement, right? Any 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 um, insight you can you can give it to us? Uh, yes, of course. You know, uh, my uh, last uh, employment, uh, where I had an executive position with uh, uh, with Siemens, uh, and even before that, I, I had an opportunity of working closely with Group Dassault. Uh, I worked for Group Dassault, which is another leading European uh, business house uh, with uh, uh, deep inroads into into the technology. Uh, my my views are uh, you know the green in, green investment is not new. There is a feedback coming in. So let me know if I'm audible properly. We can hear you so far. Okay. So there is a there is a the investment into green technologies are not new. Uh, you know that's that's over at, at least two decades or if not older in many ways. However, what is happening uh, in the last uh, I would say 10 years is uh, there is an em a renewed emphasis by uh, uh, the investment community to uh, literally measure if uh, the returns as promised is, uh, is being achieved or not. So I think, I think that's... Uh, uh, you know, I, I can I can actually hear myself. So it's very distracting. Uh, may, maybe if all of you can go on mute, there is a massive feedback I'm getting in. See, Bright, listen. Can you mute yourself first? Because I mute it full here. Okay. So if I'm audible now. Uh, uh, you know what? What I'm what I'm seeing is over the last ten years, the focus has shifted from 
uh, investments in technologies and operations, a lot of stuff that Lazy was talking about, from actually measuring that have we re- have we achieved what we said we have, we were supposed to achieve, and that's where uh, there is a big gap between what was promised and what has been delivered. Uh, I can tell you, and one of the reasons because I work very very closely also with the European uh, offices uh, even today, uh, the Europeans are far more careful in doing their due diligences. So we may we may say that you know they are taking more time and they are not moving as fast as twenty four by seven as the Asians do, but I think the the uh, report which an an European investor demands uh, and and the quality of that measure is actually gold standard, uh, and I have no doubt in saying that I feel much more comfortable when I have worked with an European investor versus versus even an American investor. I feel more comfortable. Uh, at the end result, it might get a little more frustrating. It might definitely is more time consuming, but the end result is far more, uh, uh, far more secure. It's the due diligence is far more complete, and and it, the results are showing. For example, if you see uh, the overall uh, the market of the green bonds, uh, Europe is far ahead in terms of uh, the actual raising and deployment of green bonds, asset under management, even on their capital allo- allocations out of their largest of their insurance, reinsurance companies, uh, etc. Uh, even the, the, the resources being deployed for the money that, for example, European Union allocates through their own uh, uh, vehicles uh, into uh, universities as well as into uh, uh, quasi-venture funds uh, for uh, investments in green uh, uh, technologies are, are substantially significant uh, compared to other parts of the world. So I think that's a great leaf to take in. Coming in from Asia, I think Asian venture capital industry, I completely agree with uh, Lizu when she's saying that a lot of that money is in actually in creating is going into operations. It is actually setting up of uh, uh, the the destination allocations for uh, whether it's a renewable energy plant or whether it's, a, uh, you know, uh, more and more we are seeing money going into agricultural sector, food, food and food security sector uh, with, with very strong environmental impact, extractives. Um, in in urban urban design urban planning so again which has a very large environmental impact so uh, I, I'm seeing that the portfolios are started to happen in Asia uh, as we speak and I believe that covid will only accelerate that portfolio formation for sure for example two areas one is uh, urban urban planning other than the other than the green energy sector uh, other than the extractive sector the urban urban planning and in the area of food I expect the next five years Asia to lead the way. Because again, because of the size of the population, the size of the cities that we see, uh, the the challenges that we see of many of these countries coming in from one level of equilibrium to the other level of equilibrium in terms of livelihood, and the the various millions and billions of mouths that we have to feed uh, profitably and uh, uh, and sustainably in this continent, um, I think these two areas would be very important. And the last but not the least is uh, there is a very large impact of uh, industry 4.0 technologies in across the ESG spectrum. And if I if, if there is a, a horizontal that can be developed around uh, applications of industry 4.0 in, uh, in, uh, in across the spectrum of ESG, ESG funding, uh, literally 50% plus of, uh, of investments as well as returns, returns could be even more, are predetermined by the kind of technologies that goes in. And that could be great opportunities for countries, uh, not just the, the traditional tech countries like, like China, Korea, India, Japan, etc., but even countries like uh, a big impact for countries like Singapore, countries like uh, uh, Vietnam and other places. So that's the canvas that I see from, from an Asia's uh, uh, emphasis and uh, returns coming out from the environmental venture capital industry. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Suman. Uh, actually, as uh, from a uh, uh, VC point, uh, we, sometimes when, when, when we start a fund, we, we got no choice because we need to provide the financial return to our investors. So we are in general looking for 25 to 30 percent uh, uh, IRR. I think Rosa, I saw Rosa question, but I believe for some impact investing uh, fund, they will probably lo- looking at uh, a lower single digit percentage return uh, because I think they have special mission and they are not just looking for the financial return. I think they are looking at really the impact, the positive impact to the earth. Uh, of course, I think uh, when we're looking at the green investment, it doesn't mean that 
we need to sacrifice our, our return because some green tech, they actually have a very quick uh, commercialization potential, uh, potential. At the same time, they can also do good to, to the earth. Uh, Seabright, your turn. You are investors. So how, how you look at it? Are you going to sacrifice your return for the, earth, for the good of the earth? <laughs> That's a very important and interesting question. Sometimes it could be a paradox. So, um, I mean, you know, as a venture capital, as an investor, you have to always focusing on the long term returns. Of course, you know, that's your ultimate mission. But at the same time, you have to care about your operational expenses, which means you have to pay attention to the short term returns as well. So, uh, yes, that drives us to the, you know, the, the key terms. So, you know, like how you are going to evaluate a company, right? So when you, if you are focusing on the long-term returns of a company, especially in, se in sectors such as, you know, life science and technology, the R&D cycle is usually much longer than, than sectors such as consumer and, you know, like retail and uh, sectors such as manufacturing, right? Um, which means usually it takes like about, the, let's just make an example. Uh, if we are taking a look at a life science company, so the R&D cycle towards, you know, getting, uh, you know, like completed towards the FDA process is probably going to be more than, uh, you know, like more than three years or more than five years, depends on what the product is. And uh, uh, I know, you know, like R&D, it's very important by definition, you know, it's just, uh, uh, so by definition, R&D, research and development, is the development of products and process that will drive forward science and technology, which is quite interesting because, um, you know, what does that mean by drive forward science and technology? Is there, uh, you know, like measurements or evaluation standards toward that? Uh, the answer is nope. Uh, it's very, you know, like it's not that obvious that, uh, you know, there are usually five criteria that must be fulfilled, uh, uh, you know, like in order to uh, classify uh, R&D activities such as, you know, uncertain creativity, systematic, transferable and novel, which means uh, usually R&D is the purpose of the R&D is to resolve scientific or technological uncertainties and seek for, uh, you know, relative advancement, which means ultimately this is going to drive productions of, you know, underlying technology and the underlying products. So uh, there is a very interesting data I wanted to share with all of you is uh, if we take a look at uh, the gross domestic expen expenditures on the R&D in 2018 uh, from the OECD, uh, we can find that, uh, you know, countries such as the U.S. and U.K., they have very similar uh, gross domestic expenditures uh, towards R&D in 2018 and uh, actually similar year over year as well with stable growth. And uh, so uh, in 2018, uh, so the United States have more than 481 billion expenditures in R&D itself and the UK have similar uh, data. And, uh, and we know that United States is actually uh, the country that has most technology companies in the world. Uh, at the same time, if we take a look, since, you know, this is an Asia meeting, so uh, let's talk about China for a second, for a moment. So if we take a look at China's data, so um, in 2018, China's uh, gross domestic expenditure on R&D is roughly around 298 billion U.S. dollars, which is around half of, you know, the expenditure of the United States. Uh, but if we take a look at, uh, there is a, another interesting, you know, data that I wanted to share with you as well is, is you know, if we take a look at uh, the GDP per capita for the United States, it's roughly about uh, uh, 59,000 US dollars in 2017 in the United States. But in China, it's roughly about 10,000 U.S. dollars in 2019, which is much, much lower than the United States. So, uh, which, you know, we can, we can have a conclusion from the data right now is, um, the R&D, even though the R&D is, 
you know, relatively for the long term, but uh, the expenditures for the R&D still generates lots of value in the long term. Hold on. Okay, unmute me. Yeah. Well, well, I uh, see. Bright actually bring us uh, bring up the point that you know uh, relate to our more or less related. Our second question is on the R and D universal R and D's expenditures. I think I think one we we all we all understand that one of the major uh, R and D components in, in in any society or in the world is from the universities. But at the moment, I I I myself don't feel that you know that we as a venture capitalist we have been fully utilize this R&D potential at all. Because uh, in some extent, you know, I, I worked with a few universities before. I'm also working at a university now. I think working with a professor is a hardship, you know, as an investor. Okay? <laughs> I, I don't know your experience. Uh, uh, Li Shen, you have experience work with the professor on commercializing the R&D? Uh, yes, I do have a quite a lot of experience working with professor or academia, uh, academia background uh, and uh, experts, uh, globally experts on, on certain projects. Uh, I would say the uh, common um, um, pattern I see is uh, they are very good with technology and the theoretical uh, 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 you know, technology component. Uh, as far as coming to how to commercialize, which is focused on marketing sales uh, process, uh, typically, they don't have the sense of, of the marketing and the sales. So it's made very difficult to transition from the lab uh, and to the uh, to the no, the real life. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Suman, I believe when you work for the uh, major uh, corporation, you, you probably have sponsored a lot of R&Ds in universities, right? Uh, have you ever patronized them to commercialize it? Uh, so uh, it's a it's it has been I would say a mixed bag of uh, of returns uh, in terms of uh, long term uh, you know uh, I would say it's spotty you, you really can't do a, draw, draw a trend and say oh it's worked it doesn't it didn't work uh, it's it also depends upon a uh, lot of the students who were involved in those projects or the professors who were involved in those projects. Some of them later, if they had an entrepreneurial bend of mind, it has worked much better than if it was just a research funded project and then the project went nowhere. So so that's that would be my if, if I had to generalize. But coming back to R&D, again, I think there are uh, two kinds of R&D. One is a core core R&D and another is an application. One basically one is research and another is development. Right. So there is normally more short term to medium term uh, returns on developmental budget. Whereas research budget, anywhere like a like a early stage VC, it's in a one into one is into ten, one into twenty uh, kind of a return on the on the research, and some of these researches can be flipped over a long period of time. So I would say, uh, you know, uh, I personally wouldn't lose heart uh, on uh, university uh, and and teaching, but I would I would pretty much focus on the individual of the professor and the cohort team which is engaged in doing the R and D before I spend my today's hard-earned budget and not the corporate budget in, in financing R&D with, uh, with an university. Absolutely. Okay, let's look at the um, question from the uh, floor. If you look at the comments, you probably can see some question. Now, one question is from uh, Gregory. He won our thoughts on the energy investment, on energy return, to transition and design, build the new tech and solution, the issue of the eco, eco, ecological degradation. Okay, um, anybody interested in this one? I think he's talking about new technologies, solution on, uh, is it biodegradable? Are you talking about, uh, Gregory? Energy based on biodegradable substance. Have you have any of us? Uh, have any of you have have uh, looked and into this particular uh, uh, sector? So, um, oh, go ahead. No, go go ahead, Lizzie. Oh, I can just make a very high level comments. Uh, so these are, uh, I would say, um, uh, biomass project or uh, waste to energy projects uh, from. 
commercial uh, or operational standpoint, there are certain technology is generally accepted. Uh, most of the EPC companies are very uh, comfortable with certain, you know, kind of golden standards technology. So these are um, uh, the return on these projects are very easy to predict and then uh, um, able to uh, execute. Uh, but same time, there are a lot of new technology, um, which it's very difficult to predict the commercialization and the actual return on the projects. Uh, that's kind of what I see from the uh, investment standpoint. Okay. Uh, so uh, then my uh, my view on uh, on this is uh, you know uh, if I, if you really see the macro and uh, not always macro is micro but if you see the macro uh, we have uh, the it is 2018 is expected to be the year when uh, the coal crossover for the world has happened that means the man maximum number of uh, the, the amount of energy that the world has generated out of coal and fossil fuel uh, including the ones that you know the cars and the autom automotives that is on the street and the roads, uh, you know, b running on gasoline. Uh, uh, 2018 is expected now to be the back backward calculating model in the crossover year for fossil fuels. So, uh, so much so that most of the bigger, biggest of the automotive companies, for example, have stopped, uh, you know, their R&Ds on uh, IC engines completely. Daimler has completely got out of all, all technologies around IC engines. So, so this question that you have addressed, Lizu, uh, is, is very pertinent with that that uh, paradigm that uh, you know the circularity of the of the investment in environment uh, cannot it 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 has to be circular circular you know, essentially the circularity is extremely important because if it is not uh, not circular then then uh, you know very soon you are just shifting the problem from one part of the uh, uh, country or one part of the economy to the other part of the economy for example in india where uh, or maybe even in china because the maximum amount of energy is, is generated out of coal plants by doing electric vehicles you're just moving away your uh, pollution from dense pollution from the city to another place where this coal is getting burnt to generate the dirty power so so you have to finally Come up with a circular uh, circularity around your around your investment, and I think the smart investor would be looking for those circularities to uh, to put in put in money. And and one more comment, uh, maybe I'm I'm stealing that comment from on the on the investment returns. While yes, the ESG funds are expected to have a lower return, but in reality, uh, if I see the ESG funds have been generating very good returns, and then I was looking at the numbers, I think in uh, last year. Uh, nine of the biggest ESG mutual funds in the U.S. Uh, outperformed the S&P 500, and seven of them have been beating the benchmark for the last past five years. So there is no reason to be apologetic about the ESG money. There is a there is a lot of money, and it's good money. You know, you're saving the planet and making money. Yes, I I, I think it's true. I when we look at the uh, private equity the equity fund performance, uh, we found that actually. Uh, fund invest in sustainability actually have a better return compared to those who didn't. Uh, but for the VC fund, sometimes we, we may, we, we may plan by our own charter. Uh, see, Bright, as far as I know, in uh, China, there's many um, biodegradable uh, power plants, such as I think they, uh, they convert the rubbish, you know, um, food residuals to be Power. I don't know in China have you have encountered such kind of projects or investment? Sure. Uh, so right now is you're right on that. So, uh, but uh, actually, you know, like the actual investment about the energy and renewable in energy industry was, I think, is you know, in the actually be between 2015 to uh, 2018, and right now they shift to uh, the electric vehicle. Uh, such as you know the EVs uh, and uh, you know like uh, relative ecosystem projects. So uh, and uh, you know the powertrains and the battery systems. You know like uh, those uh, energy product that is related to the manufacturing and the automotive sector. So right now it's a shift between that. But uh, China is our always looking for you know like all the you know different investment project that could uh you know have the environmental the less environmental pollutions indeed so yes um that's the current trend in china right now 
And uh, I mean, just to speak back to、uh, the returns, I think. Uh, usually, if you are just looking for、uh, like short-term、uh, returns,、uh, actually we can structure use different investment product to structure the investment view. So, okay,、uh, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Right.、Uh, sure. I saw another question from uh, Rosa. Uh, it's talking about、uh, whether we can give、uh, some advice on the fundraising for a agri tech startup project. With business、uh, converting a, a rice hoods horses into the animal feed component. Honestly, I don't know what technology it is, but、um, I think animal feed. You know, architect definitely is、uh, one of the area、uh, we are looking at. You know, I, I actually studying it.、Uh, we have this、uh, geo data. Uh, analysis using the satellite analysis the land the the rain so that to feed the crop to have high yield okay、um, that is one thing the other more common in、uh, agri tech is using the robot to test the、uh, uh, 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 humidity、uh, fertilizing as well as the weak remove the weak using microwave okay we did we we do see this our our agro tech projects. Um, any of you have、uh, experience or have encountered、yeah. this agro tech project, and perhaps we can give Rosa some yeah, advice. A very quick one, a very quick one. So we are,、uh, you know, as I said,、uh, the pandemic. Two areas of、uh, environmental、uh, fund funds are,、uh, in my belief, is going to accelerate. One is、uh, aside of the energy sector, which is、uh, there already. One is in the area of food, and the other one is in the area of urban urbanization and living, urban living. Uh, and Asia will kind of lead the way for both、uh, known reasons of the population. So we are in the process of、uh, raising a, a, a specific、uh, food security fund, and、uh, the core of the fund is actually agrotech. So、uh, so I can tell you this is a very exciting area, and a lot of green、uh, green money, green bonds, including blue bonds. Our our、uh, investors are investing into、um, agro projects because again the circularity gets completed.、Uh, it's you're producing food. You're looking at、uh, multiples coming out of uh, your uh, food and 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 forest forest resources. Agri agri and forest produces that goes into environmental、uh, aspects and impacts.、Uh, and、uh, it's multidimensional. So yeah, it's a、uh, it's definitely a, a great area for environmental、uh, venture capital industry. Uh, and environmental funds to invest in, and we will see accelerating investments happening in agritech. Okay. Any anybody want to add something?、Uh, so we we are currently working on a project related to the agritech. So、uh, and uh, it's uh, like、uh, so. So I think for the agritech sector, what matters more is how your technology is going to apply. Have you know what kind of impacts on the underlying scenarios? For example, the technology you know the agritech project we are working on is including the use of seeds significantly, which is going to bring lots of value to the farmers and the, the you know the seed companies. So I think what matters the most is、um, you know which application scenarios、uh, you know because agriculture is a big and a very broad sector. And、uh, you know how many consumers, and、uh, you know how much impacts can you bring toward this sector? I think that's something important to to take a look. Nishan,、uh, I just want to let,、uh, add one more comment.、Uh, when people are looking for fundraising, they normally go to VC、uh, VC funds.、Uh, one of the area they、uh, tend to overlook is a corporate venture fund. Uh, uh, corporate venture. So these venture typically do not looking for any commercialization as long as you have good technology. They are ready to acquire. So just no, just pay attention to those places as well. I think for those、uh, startup,、uh, particularly if you have、uh, some、uh, good possible impact to the society,、uh, another alternative is look for the angel investment in in addition to the corporate. Because sometimes angel in general they are quite rich, they are not targeting for、uh, making a lot of money, you know. But they are rather doing some good to the society, you know. I think I believe like uh, um, you know some rich people they will be quite happy to support, 
uh, the uh, the uh, good use of technology in the green area. I'm afraid we don't have much time uh, for this panel. Um, uh, so uh, we only have uh, 57 seconds left. I probably you saw all the things. Let's take a take a crop photo so I can say to you, is it okay? Okay, uh, can you put the, the list of this attendees also? Uh, yes, so I will take photo together with the attendees I will say to you, okay? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you, and uh, thank you, panel members. Nice to have you today, and all the attendees who attend our session. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.